I'm with uh, Nora Goldstein, executive editor of BioCycle uh, here in San Diego at the, the annual uh, West Coast BioCycle Conference. And um, Nora, I've got a few questions for you. In the, in the March issue of BioCycle, we ran a profile of uh, a, a profitable city composting operation in Hutchinson, Minnesota. Um, when it began as a pilot program a decade ago, it was partially funded by a $1 million uh, state grant and a few large county grants. Obviously, the key to a successful self-supporting composting operation takes some public funding, but with the current economic situations, uh, is, is the money still there? I think as long as you have your, your program put together and know what you want to do, and started at a scale that you can find grant money for, uh, and your end goal is to really work your program into profitability as a municipal program, that that monies are still there for grant funds, perhaps for some loans. What the city of Hutchinson did is they also joined forces with a private entity uh, called Garrett Corporation that is a bagging and mark product marketing company, so that is one aspect, but really what they've done is in their community, they've made an investment and now they're servicing other communities in their county, so they're leveraging those public funds to assist other communities and at the same time provide materials for their composting operation. Okay, that makes sense. Now, uh, there was a, a recent study conducted by the uh, University of California, Davis, um, that suggests that regulators regulations aimed at limiting volatile organic compounds should probably be focused really on the most reactive compounds rather than the hundreds of other VOCs released in compost facilities. Um, how do you, how responsive do you think the, the state and federal regulatory agencies will be to, to this suggestion? I think it's a great suggestion because what this new research has shown is that when you, you actually identify the species of VOCs, you really do identify the ones directly uh, generated by the composting process, and then you can adapt your process, your compost management process to uh, address the generation of those VOCs, and that is much better valuable information than just issuing a blanket regulation setting an emission rate that really may not be addressing the problem in the first place. Okay. Um, now, a recent, I believe it was today, New York Times article suggested that uh, the Danish, although it, it, in general, we know that Europeans in general um, tend to see the benefits and incineration more than, than, than we do here in America. Um, what are the alternatives to incineration, and how feasible are they economically and politically? The major challenge with incineration is that when you build a very capital-intensive uh, facility like that, it requires that uh, that facility be fed, if you will, that volume of, of MSW, so it really limits any other opportunities for recycling, composting, and re saving those resources. Once they're combusted, you do get energy, but you lose the resource for uh, continually, for example, replenishing the soil. What we'd like to see is a balanced approach so that you uh, can incorporate recycling and composting programs and try to minimize what doesn't have to go into the landfill, return those, those raw resources either to the manufacturing process or to the soils, and preserve the landfill for materials that really don't have an end market and need to be disposed so that the landfill in turn can become an integrated part of a, of a solid waste management program. The challenge with incinerators is that they're massive operations in order to have them pay off and then you lose that flexibility in your management program. Now this also is a landfill versus composting or landfill versus, you know, uh, uh, other alternative. It's not, it's not a landfill versus composting issue, I assume. I mean, how can solid waste managers accommodate that need to efficiently manage their landfills while also recycling to the maximum extent possible? Sure. Uh, we are firm believers that uh, you need to not use the landfill to put in resources that have a higher and better end use. And uh, in terms of the organic waste stream, there's a trend right now in some states to try to repeal bans on disposing yard trimmings in the name of green energy, that it's going to generate methane and uh, that you can capture and, and use for energy. And that really is a, a misnomer and a misuse of the landfill. And the, 
Uh, so what we really see is trying to use your landfill facilities to uh, manage materials that don't have a higher and better end use. And at the same time, use those sites. There are existing solid waste management sites with trucks coming in and out. Perhaps you want to use those for uh, the sites where you're going to be doing additional composting or dry anaerobic digestion. So there's, uh, there's definitely compatibility with landfills and resource recovery in, this, in the world of recycling and composting. Now, on, uh, in the larger picture, how do you think the shift toward more sustainable communities will really change the role of traditional solid waste facilities in regard to staffing, budgets, and even uh, essentially the, the job descriptions themselves of solid waste managers? One of the things is that when you look at what's in the solid waste stream, uh, the large percentage of those materials are actually resources and raw materials for other processes or the end product that you get out of that. For example, if you compost your yard trimmings and you make a compost, that can in turn be used for rain gardens and stormwater management in your community because when you use that in the soils, it improves infiltration. A lot of cities are looking at putting in green roofs. Compost is a media for that. And it goes on whether you're looking at the recycling side or the, the composting or anaerobic digestion side. What you're doing is creating jobs in those processes and then in also preparing those end products for, for market. So a, a, a community, a municipality, actually can answer some of their own resource management needs, whether it's healthy soils or water management, uh, by actually recovering those resources, recycling them back in, and create jobs so that the person whose job may just be a front end, a loader operator at the landfill covering, in turn is you're using that same skill set to make compost to, to, to do, uh, take in some food waste streams. And what you're doing is essentially, uh, by, by saving those resources, making products, then there's a job for the person to actually market the product, screen the products, use the product. So it's a, a multiplier effect. Okay. Great. Well, thank you very much. It was good to see you here, and uh, we'll see you around. Thanks thank a lot. Thank you very much.